Being a billionaire is hard work. In between buying all the luxury cars, upscale mansions, and super yachts, they need to find time to celebrate. But how do you throw a party in a world where you have more money than God? Indulge in supremely inappropriate behavior? Illegally spend millions from government reserves? Set up a cult? Well, why not all of them? Here's some of the secret parties that billionaires don't want you to know about. Burning Man for Billionaires Burning Man is an ethereal nine-day desert festival on the outskirts of Las Vegas, Nevada, which focuses on radical self-reliance. But this post-apocalyptic Coachella hardly lines up with the outlandish requirements of the elite who want to join in the party. Which is why these billionaire babies will pay up to $50,000 to stay in a separate camp within the festival grounds, specifically catering to celebrities, entrepreneurs, and rich kids. The chefs like Kevin Lee have previously cost up to $250,000 each, as his catering style required 250 pounds of fresh fish to be flown in on private jets. But alcohol isn't included in his base rate, and you hardly expect billionaires to be satisfied with JD and Co. So he also flies in shipments of Whispering Angel, Don Julio 1942, and Don Perignon on demand. All up, the chefs will cater to around 100 privileged guests, while the 70,000 other Burning Man attendees survive on soup and scraps. Do you think any of these people know the meaning of self-reliance, or are they just finding it difficult to hear with all that money coming out of their ears? Further Future Festival If there's anything that screams entitlement more than Burning Man, it's holding a festival described as unabashed luxury on 49 acres of Native American land in Nevada, Las Vegas. With tickets starting at $350, Further Future Festival was considered the Burning Man for the 1%. Even though Burning Man has its hidden luxury camp, Further Future was a splinter cell of festival veterans unashamed at calling it a labor-free luxury lifestyle brand. It encouraged the tech elite of Silicon Valley to come and rub shoulders with one another and do business whilst getting high. Attendees included Alphabet's Eric Schmidt, Clear Channel CEO Bob Pittman, and other lab CEO Saul Griffith. Alongside fine dining in the middle of the desert and top musical acts, upgrades were available for the richest ravers. You could snag yourself a 9x9 space pod tent for $1,000, splurge on an Airstream trailer for $6,000, or how about a lunar palace with 24-hour concierge service for an eye-watering 10 grand? Turns out, ignorance does have a price tag. Bohemian Grove For one fortnight every July, a selection of the most promising men in business and politics gather in the woods of Northern California for a bizarre kind of summer camp. Among the giant redwood trees and away from prying eyes, the all-male members of the Bohemian Club gathered not to discuss business, but to bond which is a weird way of saying drink heavily. Although modern member lists are kept private, previous member lists show attendance from George Bush, junior and senior, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, Mark Twain, and Henry Kissinger. Richard Nixon once praised his initiation into the club as the first milestone on my road to presidency. This is where captains of industry rub shoulders and rule the world. So how do you get in? First, you need to be invited by someone on the inside, then pay an initiation fee of $25,000, followed by yearly fees of around the same amount. What does this get you? Well, footage leaked by Alex Jones back in 2000 reveals the camp's cult-esque activities focused around initiation rituals, druid worship, comedy plays, and lakeside talks where high-ranking officials discuss information not available to the public. It's almost unsurprising that this is the place where the idea for the Manhattan Project first came about in 1942, leading to the creation of the world's first atom bomb. So drunk billionaires are to blame for the first nuclear weapons. All that figures. Prince Faisal's Halloween Party Islamic law is strict when it comes to partying. It's illegal to procure, sell, or consume alcohol, and if a woman is caught dancing in public, she can be arrested for violating public principles. The religious theocracy runs deep, especially in Saudi Arabia, which has its own dedicated religious police. So imagine the shock of the nation when a WikiLeaks cable leaked the details of an underground Jedi party in 2010 which was only made possible by royal protection. Despite only being one of 15,000 princes, the second-tier cadet prince's link to Saudi royalty was enough to give him his own mansion and luxury car. 
A title of prince is enough to keep the religious police out of the way, making it easy to throw an elite socialite party in a country where the death penalty is still enforced for crimes as minor as blasphemy. The diplomatic cable leak detailed how the party inside the prince's residence had 150 young men and women dressed in costume for Halloween, alcohol being slugged, drugs in abundance, and even working girls on the dance floor. Since 2014, Saudi Arabia has executed over 250 people for drug and alcohol related related offenses, which explains why these parties only thrive underground. Sheikh Mohammed's Atlantis Launch Party In 2009, the Atlantis Resort in Dubai received a launch party so exorbitant it was branded as the most expensive in history. The $20 million extravaganza hosted by Sheikh Mohammed saw international guests flown in from all over the world including Sir Richard Branson, Denzel Washington, Lindsay Lohan, and Janet Jackson. The 2,000 guests were plied with over two tons of lobster and treated to a display of over a million fireworks. That's almost 10 times the amount used at the Beijing Olympics opening ceremony the previous year. But they'd prefer you didn't mention how much was spent seeing as the party was held during the country's recession and Dubai has a chronic problem with food fraud. In fact, to this day, run food is constantly being supplied to the country's poorest residents. Party life over citizens' lives, am I right? Wolves of Wall Street Thanks to the Academy Award-winning movie The Wolf of Wall Street, those words conjure up an image of men with more money than they know what to do with. So the parties are probably pretty epic, right? Uh, well, they're certainly different. The Secret Society of Kappa Beta Phi is an exclusive frat-based members club for the otherwise known Wolves of Wall Street. Journalist Kevin Roos gatecrashed one of their elusive gatherings back in 2012, ironically during the Occupy Wall Street protests. Instead of the drug-fueled, raucous parties promised by the 2013 film, the reality Roos exposed showed a lot of these old men and hedge fund babies dressing in drag, throwing jokes that range from homophobic to misogynistic, and singing musical ditties for one another. So far from the lavish lifestyles promised on the big screen, we now know the richest men on the stock market spend their time doing this. This is one of those few scenarios where seeing everyone on drugs would actually be better than reality. Sean Parker's Wedding Sean Parker, the former Facebook president and Napster founder, made good on all his friend requests at his lavish Big Sur wedding back in 2013. The Silicon Valley billionaire and his now wife, Alexandra Lanis, had their elaborate ceremony set in the wilds of California and involved 450 staff with 24 tailors and 100 artisans. They even hired Nyla Dixon, the Academy Award-winning costume designer for the Lord of the Rings franchise, to clothe and robe their 366 guests in a Tolkien-esque feast for the eyes. The full-blown fantasy setup cost the couple a grand total of $4.5 million for the three-day extravaganza, but not long after, there was trouble in paradise. The Ventana Inn, which hosted this insane display of wealth, had failed to apply for the proper permits, resulting in a hefty $1 million fine from the California Coastal Commission. The withering amount of negative press accusing the couple of damaging the environment and flaunting their excess led to them being spat on in the street and having to cancel their luxury honeymoon. But despite the false reports, the Parkers did no such thing. They paid the fine levied against the Ventana Inn and even paid the California Coastal Commission an additional one and a half million dollars as a goodwill gesture. All up, the affair cost them a huge seven million dollars and that's without adding in the cost of a second honeymoon. Sean Parker really doesn't want you talking about this. Mikhail Prokhorov's French Escape it's possible Robbie Williams' anthem, Party Like a Russian, was based on the party antics of Playboy billionaire Mikhail Prokhorov. The previous owner of the once multi-billion dollar company, Norilsk Nickel, was actually saved by one of his scandalous parties back in 2007. Treating himself and several of his closest friends, Prokhorov hired a private jet and flew his party committee to the luxury French resort town of Courchevel. Also on board were eight Russian, er, models who were brought aboard for an entertainment? After three debaucherously dangerous days, French police swooped in and arrested Mikhail for illegally importing the models. Even though the charges were later dropped, the scandal saw Prokhorov pushed out of his cushy billion dollar position at the top of the company with the final sale of his stake at a huge $10 billion. Then in a bizarre twist of fate, the financial crash of 2008 came just a few months after his exit. So as all his business rivals' fortunes toppled, Prokhorov found himself sitting alone as one of the richest men in Russia. 
Whether it's because Courchevel holds a special spot in his heart, or he just wants to rub his rival's faces in it, Prokhorov continues to visit Courchevel and go full Russian oligarch every single night, hiring out the most exclusive five-star restaurants such as Le Comte de la Pugie until the early hours of the morning and holding week-long parties there that are dripping in opulence, as well as some other things, I imagine. Prince Jeffrey Bolkaya's harem being the brother of the Sultan of Brunei clearly comes with its perks. Having royal protection meant Prince Jeffrey Bolkaya was able to embezzle almost 14.8 billion from his previous position as the country's finance minister. Despite charges being dropped, his lavish lifestyle continued to draw headlines. It's reported by numerous news outlets that the prince kept a 40-strong harem of women and indulged in, um, late night wrestling parties? The prince could burn through an exorbitant 50 million a month, which is unsurprising considering his female party guests were each paid 20 grand a week, accommodated in luxury houses on the royal estate, and were given incredibly valuable gifts of jewelry and diamonds. But this party lifestyle wasn't to last as an audit of his spending forced the brother prince to surrender most of his lavish conquests. And in a move of incredible hypocrisy that has seen him become one of the world's most hated sovereigns, the Sultan introduced stringent new Sharia laws at the beginning of 2019, punishing women who gave birth outside of marriage and sentenced Muslims caught drinking alcohol to be whipped. It seems he's very conveniently forgotten his brother's 18 illegitimate children and previous party lifestyle. What a salty Sultan. Rothschild's Surrealist Ball Imagine for a moment being a part of a family that once had the largest private fortune in history. How would you celebrate? Obviously, you'd throw an insanely expensive, elaborate, surrealist art party for other billionaires and superstars around the world. And the 1972 Rothschild's Ball was just that. Held in the Chateau de Frères, the largest and most decadent chateau in all of France at the time, the Rothschilds worked with renowned artist Salvador Dali and icon Audrey Hepburn to design an otherworldly party of hedonistic delights. With money being no obstacle, the entire chateau was transformed into an interactive maze. Servants and butlers were draped over the main staircase, pretending to be cats and attending to the guests' every need. Plates in the dining room were covered with the finest furs. Taxidermized animals had been bought to decorate the tables, and giant sugar statues on beds of roses posed as the partygoers' dessert. And what does one wear to such an event? Costumes designed by Salvador Dali, of course. Astite Baron Alexis de Rere wore an extravagant four masks in one with actual scarab beetles attached, perfumer Helen Rokas wore a whole gramophone on her head, and the Lady of the Hour Baroness Rothschild herself appeared in a golden deer's head with tears made of real diamonds. The sheer lavishness and unadulterated hedonism exposed to the public from these leaked images might just be why another ball of such scale was never held by the Rothschilds ever again. But honestly, I think every modern day billionaire could take notes from this. Which of these parties would you most like to sneak into? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.